Hello and welcome back to my studio. Today it's part four of my epic Impressionist painting series. Now we're going to look at contemporary Impressionism from the post-Impressionists through to our modern contemporary setting. Why is Impressionism still so influential today? We're going to look at a few of those things and especially in relation to different countries around the world and picking out a few standout artists as well. You're going to find out what makes Impressionism still so important and why Impressionism may be just the thing you're looking for. Okay, we've seen how Impressionism pursued light and atmosphere and artists looked at things like optical mixing of color. But Impressionism was not a closed subject. It was basically freedom. And once freedom is out, it keeps going and expanding and evolving. And that's exactly what happened with the French Impressionist movement. It spread throughout the world really very quickly on the back of industrial expansion, transportation and communication around the world. So I want to look at some of the essential parts of Impressionism that still carries on to modern times. Yes, certainly evolving, but let's have a look at some of the exciting artists that broke out of the Impressionist mold and took things further. And then we're going to look at some of the Impressionists that are basically folk heroes almost in different countries around the world and then touching on the modern contemporary Impressionist movement. These are elements that you can take out and apply to your painting. And then we'll finish off the series next time with part five with more of a painting demonstration where I'm putting some of these things into practice as well. We need to remember that the original Impressionists were focused on capturing fleeting moments and scenes from everyday life, whereas contemporary Impressionists are more concerned with conveying emotion and mood through their work. Contemporary Impressionism often incorporates more elements of abstraction and experimentation than traditional academic Impressionism. And contemporary Impressionism has been influenced by modern technology as well. Even the digital age has influenced how we express color and the possibilities of experimenting with color and composition. So overall, while contemporary Impressionism shares similarities with the original Impressionist movement, it has evolved and changed significantly over time. We can perhaps summarize this into about five points. Impressionism is now more emotion than science. So unlike the scientific approach of the original Impressionist, contemporary Impressionist want to look at color using it less in a scientific way but more for its emotional impact. There's a greater freedom of exploration and experimentation. Secondly, contemporary Impressionists have built upon the techniques and style of the 19th century Impressionists. In the 20th century, Impressionists have become more painterly, more expressive and are pushing the boundaries of traditional Impressionism. Plein air painting has also had a resurgence in popularity, especially in the last 15, 20 years or so. And this method has led to many developments of techniques, equipment, and all of this leading to more gestural work, more vibrant colors. There are many contemporary masters that are influencing so many other artists today. Artists like David LaFell, Ken Auster, Kevin McPherson, so we're seeing a bigger fusion of styles, this fifth element that is taking traditional Impressionism, post-Impressionism, abstraction even, and drawing on these influences and creating something that is unique and individual and modern and something that has really stood the test of time. So let's have a look at the evolution of Impressionism by touching on the examples of a few key artists and also the influence of Impressionism throughout the modern world. So one key character that we're all familiar with is Vincent van Gogh. When he 
reached uh, Paris after his time in uh, rather austere Netherlands, he came under the influence of Impressionism and it had a profound effect on him. Oh, but one of the key developments of Impressionism as it combined with the character of Vincent van Gogh is that his painting became so much more expressive. Impressionism was adaptable and it could easily evolve and he took it in a direction that nobody else had probably foreseen. But that's what you get when freedom is given to create and uh, Van Gogh's bright and turbulent paintings took Impressionism into an era or modern era where we have learned so much from it and been inspired by it and I think a lot of us painting today can ascribe some of our influence directly to Vincent van Gogh. Now Claude Monet, a more traditional impressionist perhaps, but uh, if we look at how his art developed, especially in the early 20th century where he painted his water lilies, amazing effects that he, he got through his painting. And yes, his uh, failing eyesight certainly played a part in it. But what he was seeing, I believe, is what he was feeling. And what he made us see was his emotions. Something that we can all take on board today as well in our painting and give more freedom to our work. Now what about Impressionism around the world? A significant influence emanated out of France and went to different parts of the world like the United States, Australia, Canada, Russia, Eastern European countries and in my home country, South Africa. Let's have a look at a few examples of those artists and uh, how Impressionism spread around the world to bring its own form of creative freedom. Now if we go and look at Spain, we get one of my favorite artists and uh, perhaps the most influential artist when it comes to painting light, and that is Joachim Sorolla. His paintings were focused on the representation of light and atmosphere, warm and cool color, that we can see how the emotion is coming through the impression that he is painting. There's no doubt that when you look at a Sorolla painting, you're not seeing science, you're seeing his emotion, how he was responding and feeling about that subject in that very moment. Extremely influential painter and, and you should certainly look up his works if you haven't done so already. Going over to the United States of America, artists like John Singer Sargent and the California Impressionists were extremely influential in bringing Impressionism to America. Sargent spent some time in Paris and the Impressionist influenced his art considerably. He's known for his loose brushwork and use of light and shadow to create depth and mood in his paintings. And he became the most sought after portrait artist of his time. Now the California Impressionists on the other hand were a group of artists who were inspired by the French Impressionists and brought their techniques to the landscapes of California. The similarity to that Mediterranean landscape I think is, was a significant part of this. Beautiful light all year round, big skies. Notable California Impressionists include William Wendt, Guy Rose and Edgar Payne. And once again you should look up their work because it is extremely important for our contemporary Impressionism today. Over in Canada, possibly the most influential artist there was Tom Thompson. Now if you see his paintings, all you are observing there is the emotional influence in his work, characterized by bold brushwork, strong compositions and incredible use of color. He admired the Impressionists for color and light and brought these techniques and developed them into his own unique style. This is why it's so important to give freedom to your own creativity and style with the help of the Impressionist influence. Australia, we've got Tom Roberts, considered the foremost Australian Impressionist painter. Others like Arthur Streeton, Charles Condor, all very important artists 
But I have a look at Roberts's paintings such as Shearing the Rams and A Breakaway, and you'll see how that loose brushwork and light and color once again is being used to capture the Australian landscape and the everyday life at that time. Another key idea of Impressionism. I want to touch on two other areas that you may not have considered. One of that is uh, Russian Impressionism. The Russian school of Impressionism in the late 19th and 20th centuries, I believe, is extremely significant and uh, developing for a large part in isolation. But we've seen over the past 30 years or so how artists like uh, Isaac Levitan, Constant Korovin and Valentin Serov were such fantastic Impressionist painters. And then my homeland, South Africa, where there was a tremendous influence of Impressionism adapted to the uh, South African lifestyle, country and people. I want to highlight a group of artists who formed an association called The New Group, formed in 1938. Their intention was to create a new kind of art that was representative of South African culture and people and landscapes. And some of the standout artists from that group were Irma Stern, known for bright colors and expressive brushstrokes. Another artist was Maggie Lopesher, and she was also inspired by the South African landscapes and people. And her paintings included bold and simplified forms in bright colors. Now you're seeing the key elements of Impressionism in all of these artists, I'm sure. Another one I particularly enjoy was also was known as Grégoire, and uh, he painted a lot of scenes around the Cape in uh, South Africa and capturing times and moments that uh, don't exist anymore. So the recording element of Impressionism is so important, recording the contemporary life at that particular time. So we can see that Impressionism has a lasting appeal and influence, and this is why Impressionism is such a fantastic movement, possibly the most revolutionary art style. It is still relevant today. It is connecting us to the beauty of nature, our surroundings, the people in it, the, the things that are going on in our own contemporary lives. We can capture that through these Impressionists. The use of color and brushwork, bright light, all of this lends itself to a personal expression through painting. And uh, this is why it is so important and so appealing to people today, because that freedom, that freedom to create is going to change you. It's going to have that influence on you, just like it did on people like Van Gogh back in the day. You take that Impressionist influence coupled with your emotion and expressiveness and your personal experiences and it gives you the freedom to create something joyful, new and relevant. Well, isn't Impressionism a fantastic achievement in the development of art? The influence still being felt so strongly today. And in the next video, part five in conclusion, I'm going to do some painting and show you some of my Impressionist approaches to this uh, contemporary style of today. Each artist is going to be different, of course, but we're still looking for that same thing, that uh, communication with nature, the light, the atmosphere, the color and loose brushwork. Isn't it wonderful? Well, be sure to join me for the next video and to make sure you don't miss out, make sure you've subscribed and hit the notification bell and you won't miss the next video. All right, don't forget, final word, my free course for you up here. If you haven't visited my art school before, check that out. I think you might enjoy it. Until next time, happy painting and cheers for now. <music>